What's up guys, this is Neil. Anionic surfactants are the most common class of surfactant, a little over half of the market in terms of tons, and the most common types of anionics are sulfonates or sulfates made by attaching an SO3 group hydrophilic head to the hydrophobic tail, if you remember our tadpole motif. If the SO3 is connected via the sulfur atom, that's known as a sulfonate, and if the uh, connection is via the oxygen atom, an ether linkage, that's known as a sulfate. So maybe the way to remember it is if the sulfur is on the hydrophobe, then that's a, a sulfonate. So there are a number of ways to carry out sulfonation or sulfation, number of um, reagents. You can use chlorosulfonic acid, sulfuric acid, oleum, bisulfite, but the most common by far way of carrying out sulfation or sulfonation today in the surfactant industry is via the use of gaseous SO3, sulfur trioxide. And the most common type of uh, reactor system in which that is carried out is some form of falling film reactor. Now here, full disclosure, um, the uh, company Balestra in Italy is a major supplier of these types of systems. Uh, they happen to be a long-term client of mine, so if you want to take this as an infomercial, please go ahead and do that. Um, I make no, no bones about that. Uh, a typical fully integrated sulfation sulfonation plant will take in molten sulfur. You'll get molten sulfur delivered to the facility, store it in your heated storage area, and then burn that sulfur to make sulfur dioxide, catalytically convert that into sulfur trioxide gas, and then carry out your uh, reaction. And so you've got sulfur storage, process air drying, the reaction itself, and then downstream post-treatment after the reaction could include neutralization, dioxane removal, exhaust gas treatment, drying if dry products are, are needed. The core of the system is the sulfonation reactor, the so-called falling film reactor. And we've got a diagram here in terms of just graphically how it works. You've basically got a bundle of tubes in the case of the Balestra reactor, each of which around 25 millimeters, one inch internal diameter. And in, on the inside diameter, you've got um, flowing your liquid substrate, could be LAB or lauryl alcohol, and down the inside of that, an SO3 air gas mixture, around a few percent, up to 5% of SO3, and your reaction uh, takes place as the film and as the gas falls through that reactor, the, the raw sulfonate, raw sulfonic acid coming out of the bottom, and then, as I said, downstream uh, further treatment. And so there's around six or 700, maybe more, plants of this type from Balestra operating worldwide, making products like LAS, SLS, SLES, AOS, etc., a variety of ether sulfates. Now, as we've mentioned in prior videos, there is a lot of regulation around dioxane formation, which is an issue in the sulfation of alcohol ethoxylates. So not of any substrate which is non-ethoxylated. So in the case of sulfating alcohols or alpha olefins, you don't really have a dioxane concern. With alcohol ethoxylates being sulfated to make ether sulfates, you do. I can tell you that um, Balestra has technology that uh, removes dioxane and mitigates its formation. Um, at the moment, meeting all existing and planned regulations. So I encourage you to get in touch if you're interested in finding out, out about that. And uh, I hope this has been useful in terms of getting an understanding how more than half of the surfactants sold globally are made today. Thanks again for listening.